Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are going to teach you how to play Keystone North America, which is the very first game, pretty sure very first game, from Rose Gauntlet Entertainment. Now, before we get into this instructional video, I want to mention our sponsor, StoneValleyGames.com. StoneValleyGames.com is your friendly, distant game store run by Eric and Wendy. They've got a ton of great stuff going over there. They've got the new hotness, the old classics, the old hotness, the new classics. They've got a ton of great stuff over there. They also have some really cool programs. If you are a return customer, they do have a loyalty program, so check that out. If you are in the U.S. military and you're stationed overseas with an AA, AE, or AP address, they'll ship to you for free. If you are living in the continental United States and you order $100 or more from them, they will ship to you for free. Just so much great stuff going on over there. Check them out, stonevalleygames.com. There is a link in the description below. Now, as we go through this, I do want to point out that this is the deluxe edition. I believe the standard edition would only have this style player board. Uh, the deluxe edition has a number of different uh, artwork or art pieces, I should say, on the player boards. So keep that in mind. And there probably are some additional uh, changes that, you'll, that you may notice from the deluxe to the standard edition. Now to begin setup, each player needs a player board. If you're playing a one or two player game, return any species to the box that have this symbol in the bottom corner, these three dots. That is for three and four player games only. Shuffle the remaining species cards into a deck and place them near the middle of the table. And then create a six card row by drawing from the top of the species deck. The row should be created right next to the deck. These six cards are known as the field. Randomly choose five skill tokens and place them active side up. The active side is the white side, the yellow side is inactive. The remaining skill tokens can be placed back in the box. Sort the wild cards by habitat. There will be two belonging to each habitat. Place these in stacks with an easy reach. Shuffle the secret objective cards and give one to each player, which they will keep a secret. The remaining secret objective cards are placed back in the box. Create a supply of synergy tokens, as well as research and story tokens. The time marker is then placed on a space on the time track based on the number of players. You actually can see these dots here, which indicate the number of players. So for a one player game placed on four, two player game space five, three player game six, and four player game space seven. Choose a first player by whatever method you desire and give them the first player token. The first player then receives five synergy tokens. The second player receives six. A third player would receive seven. And a fourth player would receive eight. And that's the setup. On your turn, you can do one of two actions, the introduce action or the skill action. To take the introduce action, first, take one species card from the field. Let's say the American Bison is the one I wanna take. I then need to pay for the chosen card by placing one of my synergy tokens on each card to its right. So in this case, each of these cards would need a synergy token. I then could take the American Bison it's important to note, by the way, that if at any point a card is taken that has a synergy token on it, the player gets the card and that synergy token. You then take the chosen card and place it on your player board. Anytime you place a card on your player board, you then gain one synergy token for each shared habitat symbol on an adjacent species or wild card. Adjacent is going to be any orthogonally adjacent space. So diagonal does not count as adjacent. So by placing the American Bison here, I would get four synergy tokens. The Coyote has these same two symbols, as you can see there. And so that's two synergy tokens. And then two more for these two symbols on the Red Wolf. The Arctic Alpine card is adjacent, but does not share any symbols with the American Bison. And again, if a card had been in any of these diagonal spaces, that would not be considered adjacent. The use skill action is the other thing a player can do on their turn instead of 
The introduce action. The use skill action lets you use the effects on the five skill tokens on the table. When using skill tokens, you can either choose one active skill, which is the white side, or all exhausted skills, which would be the yellow side. If you choose to resolve one active side, you choose one of the skill tokens, resolve that skill in its entirety, and then flip it over to its exhausted side. If instead you decide to resolve the effects of all skills on their exhausted side, then you resolve these three in this case in the order of your choice. After resolving each of them, you then flip them all back to their active side. And finally, you move the time token down one space. It should be noted that the panel at the bottom here is a preview of what the other side is going to do. You do not resolve the bottom whenever you're resolving a side of the token. It's just a preview. So only resolve the top portion when resolving it. I'm not gonna go through each of these skill token descriptions. However, you'll find all of them on the back of the rule book and they're all very well described. However, it should be noted that all effects are optional with the exception of the discard effect, which is mandatory. Once per turn, a player may discard 10 synergy tokens to then take a wild card and place it on any empty space on their player board. This special action can be done on a player's turn before or after they take their main action for the turn. A wild card has a set habitat, as you can see here, and a set season found here. However, the sequence number can be anything from one to five, and the player gets to choose what that sequence number will be when they're scoring. When placing the wild card on your player board, gain a synergy token for each matching adjacent habitat as usual. In this case, two synergy tokens for those two matching habitats. It should also be noted that when scoring this sequence number for this wild card can be considered one number for scoring horizontally and another number for scoring vertically. At the end of your turn, slide all remaining species cards in the field to the right. Then draw and place cards from the species deck to bring the total number of cards in the field back to six. You always fill the rightmost empty slot first and then move left. If the species deck ever runs out of cards to draw, shuffle any cards in the discard pile to form a new deck and then continue drawing as normal. When a player has filled every space on their player board or the time marker has reached zero, you are now in the final round of the game. All players who have yet to go that round should take their turn and then the game will end. At the end of the game, you'll score each ecosystem and each completed secret objective on your player board, and then you'll add one point for every three synergy tokens you have. An ecosystem is created when two or more cards with matching habitats have been arranged in ascending or descending consecutive numerical order. So for instance, the coyote and American bison form an ecosystem because they are in ascending order, three and four, as well as the American bison, and the Red Wolf. Those are two different ecosystems. Coyote, American Bison, American Bison, Red Wolf. The player gains one point for each card in the ecosystem. So two points here and two points here. You can only score one ecosystem for each row or column on your player board, so make sure you choose the most valuable one. So for instance, in this case, the Arctic Alpine and the Coyote form an ecosystem because they both have this symbol, but then the coyote, American bison, and red wolf form a separate one because they all have this symbol in common as well as this symbol. And so they would actually be the more valuable ecosystem because there's three cards, whereas this one only has two cards. Players will also get one point for each research token in an ecosystem. Also, any species with this symbol, as you see here, here, and here, is known as a keystone species. For every keystone species in an ecosystem, score that ecosystem again. So let's look at this ecosystem again with a coyote and American bison now that we have this and we know about the keystones. Initially, we get one, two points for it. 
plus one point for the research token. So that's three points for this ecosystem. But then there's a keystone species and another keystone species. So it'll get scored two more times, each time worth three points. So that's a total of nine points for this ecosystem. It's important to remember that not only do ecosystems need to be in ascending or descending order, they also must be consecutive. So in this case, the American bison and red wolf do form an ecosystem. The cactus does not, however, because it is not in consecutive order, even though it is in ascending order. It's also important to keep in mind that a wild card can only represent numbers one through five. It cannot represent number six or zero. So in this case, the American bison, red wolf, and forest do not form an ecosystem, only the American bison and red wolf, because there is no number that this wild card could be where it would fit the ecosystem. On the other hand, of course, if it were over here, then it would absolutely fit the ecosystem. After you have finished scoring your ecosystems, make sure you also gain one point for every three synergy tokens you still have. Completing your secret objective can lead to big points at the end of the game. Secret objectives are comprised of four different goals. Each goal has a pattern you're trying to achieve with the cards you place on your player board. The bottom of page nine of the rulebook has a complete guide to what each of these types of patterns mean. And for each goal completed, you gain more and more points. This provides you another pathway to claim victory. It should also be noted that these patterns can be rotated in any way you wish, but each goal may only be completed once. So for instance, with this first goal here, we have that, and you can see this symbol, the summer symbol here. We've got Montezuma Bald Cypress, American Black Bear, and Eastern Hellbender forming that L shape here. And so this one is completed. Then for this goal here, we need two endangered species in that pattern. And you can see we have the ringed seal and the American bison, which both have the endangered species symbol. And then you can see for this goal, we need three species with the tag icon. And you can find the, that Montezuma bald cypress, the piping plover, and the swallow-tailed kite all have that symbol. And so this one is completed. And then finally, we need four with the fall symbol anywhere on the board. And we've got it with the peregrine falcon, the sugar maple, the Virginia possum, and the bighorn sheep. And so as a result, we would score all four of them and get 24 points. And there you go. That's everything you need to know to play Keystone North America. Now, I did not cover the solo rules. There is, I believe, one page. Let's see here. One page for solo rules, so pretty easy to jump into. And that's where the story tokens come into play as well. So be sure to check that out if solo mode is something that you would be interested in. Also, be sure to come back and check out our other instructional videos. We've got how to play Frost Haven that we're in the middle of making. We've got how to play Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Both of those series have one video up so far. We're also going to be finishing up how to play Perdition's Mouth. Only one video left in that series. And we've got how to play Australia coming up soon as well. And until next time, if you're bored online, or offline.